Okay, we're going to have a look now at uh, similarities and differences between oxidative phosphorylation and photophosphorylation. Um, so they both exist um, in organelles um, and also in bacteria, um, but the organelles that we consider them in are obviously uh, mitochondria and chloroplasts. So both of these consist of a two membranes. In mitochondria there's the outer membrane and the inner membrane and in chloroplast it's the thylakoid membranes and the gap between the two. You've also got a electron transport chain in both of them and then you've got ATP synthase here and here. Now what we then need is we need a force to push protons against their gradient. So now on the interior, so in the gap between the um, outer membrane and the inner membrane and also in the thylakoid interior, there are lots of hydrogen ions. Whereas in the stroma and the matrix there are few hydrogen ions or fewer hydrogen ions. In um, Oxidative phosphorylation, we supply the force to move the protons by um, the high energy electrons which are coming from NADH. And the NADH delivers the high energy electrons and gets turned back into NAD. And this NAD can go back into link reaction and Krebs cycle and glycolysis and pick up more electrons. Now, these high energy electrons then get passed down the electron transport chain, progressive series of oxidation and redu reduction reactions, and that pushes, the energy involved in that is used to push protons across the membrane. At the end of the chain of um, oxidation and reduction reactions, then you have oxygen, which is the stuff you're breathing in at the moment, so in order to stay alive to watch this. And this oxygen joins with the electron that's come from the Krebs cycle and the link reaction via the NAD, and also joins with hydrogen ions, and it forms water. Now, if we compare that with what's going on with photosynthesis is that photosynthesis is getting its energy photosynthesis is getting its energy from the capturing of light um, and this capturing of light is being done by um, photosystems now this is um, photosystem 2 which is the evolution of which is probably the most important event in the history of life on earth um, and photosystem 2 is capturing light and that energy is being used to take an electron off the chlorophyll and move the electron along an electron transport chain to photosystem 1. And photosystem 1 should be green. Um, photosystem 1 is then taking the electron off that and then that electron ends up on NADP becoming reduced to form NADPH. As the electron has travelled down the um, electron transport chain, well, the energy has been used to push protons from the stroma into the thylakoid interior from where there are few to where there are lots. And this generates an electrochemical gradient. Now, we've lost an electron off photosystem two, and we're gonna to have to replace that electron. And we do this by taking water and we split the water in a process called photolysis 
And this happens inside the thylakoid interior because it also contributes to the proton gradient. And we split it to give us oxygen, electrons, which are going to replace these ones which have been lost in photosystem 2, um, and hydrogen ions which are going to help to contribute to the proton gradient. So going back to this and summarise again, so here we've delivered high energy electrons from the NAD. That's gone down a chain of carriers and then joined with oxygen to produce water. The energy in that high energy electron has been used to move protons from where there's few to where there's lots. In chloroplasts, we've taken the energy from light and we've used it to move in a high energy electron um, from photosystem 2 to photosystem 1 and that's joined with NADP to form NADPH to reduce it. We've used some of that energy to push protons across the membrane. So in both of these we've generated a proton gradient and this is called chemiosmosis because what's going to happen next is that these protons are going to flow out and what they're going to flow out through is an amazing enzyme or complex of enzymes called ATP synthase. Uh, ATP synthase rotates and this is driven by the proton gradient and it, as it rotates it takes ADP and it joins it with phosphate to produce ATP. And the same ATP synthase is present and works in the same way. So we have ADP again being adding to a phosphate being turned into ATP. So what you can what hopefully you can now see is the similarities in ATP generation that exist with the uh, mitochondria and also in the thylakoid membrane. That both are driven by the flow of electrons moving protons from where there's few to where there's lots. Both then generate the ATP by having the ATP flow out through ATP synthetase, or synthase, sorry, and as it does so, it generates ATP, so the protons flow out and it generates ATP. However, there are some differences. In um, oxidative phosphorylation, the energy to do this comes from the electron that's been removed in Krebs cycle and the link reaction and glycolysis and stuck onto NAD. And that electron ends up on oxygen to produce water. Whereas in photosynthesis, the energy to drive this process has come from light. And light has been captured by the magnesium ions, which are in photosystem 2 and photosystem 1. And that light energy is used to produce the electron which goes down the chain of carriers. At the end of that chain of carriers, that electron is joined with um, NADP, forming NADPH. That electron has to be re re replaced. So in order to do that, you carry out photolysis, which is taking a water, splitting it into hydrogen's electrons, and produce with the production of oxygen. Anyway, I hope this has shed some light and I hope you understand a bit more. Thanks very much.